There is always two sides to every story. And when you're dealing with someone who is egotistical and narcissistic and only thinks about themselves, you're only going to hear about how it affects them. That's reality. I was just bashed by Luke Duncan on his podcast, Low Budget Live, because I didn't remember his name and his channel name when doing the video about James Watson. Sorry, brain fart there. On Luke Duncan's podcast, Low Budget Live, I think it's called. Actually, I know it's called Low Budget Live now that I think about it. He's been very vocal. I think the show, I think, I think it's called Low Budget Live. I think, I think it's Low Budget Live. That's what he did when he dogged me out one day. He's like, I think his name is Luke Duncan. And then on Luke Duncan's podcast, Low Budget Live, I think it's called. Actually, I know it's called Low Budget Live now that I think about it. I have them all the time because I'm getting old and I have other things on my mind. I'm trying to calculate what I'm going to say, but at the same time, trying to do things. It's just how this works in doing videos. There should be some background behind what happened today because this is going to be the second time I'm filming this because the first one might have had a whole bunch of swear words and some things that I probably would have regretted down the line. But I don't regret what I'm going to say this time because this is my side of the story. Luke and I met several years ago. Actually, I didn't know who Luke was until four years ago. So for the last 25 years, I've been in the industry, behind the scenes, doing videos for people, doing catalogs and websites and all sorts of stuff. I left a big company to go start doing this on my own. Um, I've been in the industry or behind the scenes in the industry for 25 or 26 years way before he was trying to be a professional fisherman, way before he even thought about doing a podcast. And I started I started a radio show with a friend called Hogwild Charters. In fact, our first show, or one of our first shows, we interviewed Ray Scott. Now that was 25 years ago. That's a long time ago. And when I first started that, that show, that live radio show on ESPN, not just a little off the wall, AM radio station, an FM radio station that was syndicated in two places at that time uh, on ESPN. There was only one fishing podcast on Apple iTunes. We were the second one. From there, I let, went to a show called Boudreaux's Boondocks. And when I went to with with when I joined Boudreaux, we had to have a, a drastic change because s spelling out Boudreaux and Boondocks was a nightmare. So we made it Fishing Florida Radio. And for 12, 14 some odd years, we were the number one show in Florida. Not just 17 people watching or listening. We were broad syndicated throughout the state on a bunch of AM and FM stations. Not just little stations, drastically big stations. That's where we got our 14,000 followers on, plus followers on Instagram or on fo uh, Facebook, excuse me. Again, another glitch. I'm sorry I made any mistakes, Luke. I can't. I know I can't make a mistake, and I know your skin is too thin to make sure that someone makes a mistake. But hand to God, I've never been a Luke Duncan fan. Now, we met at the NPFL at the first event. I never asked for a selfie. That's a blatant lie. I don't do selfies. The last time I took a selfie with someone other than my son or my wife was coach night. And the reason why I did Coach Knight is because I went to a basketball camp of his. And it was great, great to see him and to catch up and to get made fun of while we were doing that. I don't do selfies. I'm just not a good enough, good looking enough person. It's just, and I have, a, I have a problem with just this camera. That's the truth. Um, but I've never, I've never taken a selfie with him. The second time, we've never, we've only met twice. The second time, and, and I should say, all he, he talked about him being fired from TH Marine at that meeting. We, I didn't know his name, whatever it was, or I don't even know what it was about. But the reason why I found out about Luke, with going back a little bit, was because there were fans of the radio show that were like, are you seeing what's going on with Major League Fishing and, this, and Luke Duncan? And I'm like, I haven't, I don't have a clue. No offense, I don't have a clue. There were other things that I'm doing every week to make the show work, and I watched a bunch of his podcasts at that time so I could get the information that I needed to get to do it. Now I agreed there should be no one going after him or trying to make him lose his job over 
what was happening on his podcast. I completely backed him. When he went to NPFL, we had an, an incident that he didn't like because I forgot his name, which is just narcissistic, because people have brain farts. And unless you're in my family or you're someone I see every day, there's a, probably a pretty good chance I'm not going to remember your name or the podcasts I don't listen to. That's the truth. I don't listen to a lot of fishing podcasts. I do a lot of basketball stuff or I do a lot of swimming stuff. I do other things than fishing. But we met there, kind of sort of hashed out things, kind of left on weird footing. I was trying to tell NPFL what I thought they should be doing to help boost their first year. And as, as he has told me, everybody at NPFL has called me phony and a clown and all sorts of other derogatory names. Or names, I guess that's the best way to put it. Maybe they're not derogatory. And NPFL might not like my take on what they've done right and what they've done wrong, because I think they've done a lot of things wrong. Also, I've never really bashed Luke or Fat Cat on anything that I've done. I've talked about that they may, might need a little, some new blood to come in, but that isn't saying kick them off or ban them or suspend them. I've never said that at all. I've never said anything of the sort. I've said that they've done, they've done things wrong, that they have, there's irregular, uh, there's things that I question saying they get 42 million views, but their, their YouTube channel has 2,000 subscribers. It just doesn't make sense. There aren't even 42 million. That means every angler in the United States watched NPFL. And that's just, that doesn't, it doesn't calculate. Getting back to it. The next time we saw each other was at ICAST, which is true. And I saw him and I went over and talked to him and I told him, you know, good, I hope he's having a good job. But I don't, I don't blow smoke up his ass. I just say, oh, I hope you're doing well. You know, blah, blah, blah. It's nothing nothing good, nothing bad. And at that point in time, he wanted to make sure that I knew about something that happened in the MPFL. That one of the guys had snagged a fi fish or something that was cheating oriented, which I had no clue about. I had zero clue about. I had to go back home and look it up because I wasn't watching or I don't keep up with MPFL. I just don't. It's no offense to MPFL. It's no offense to Luke that I don't keep up with him. I don't follow him. And if you can, and as I say this, I did a screen grab, and you can see that in the last 130 plus podcasts that he's done, I've watched exactly nine. Now, two of them I got because I downloaded to do a three second or five second clip of something that was said. I mean, that's how the, unfortunately, that's how the internet works. And when you put something on YouTube, you give the rights to YouTube and other people to take that information. He clicks on OK every time. See, there's subtleties, there's things that go on in the background that just don't make sense. So we talked, when we talked at ICAST, it was all about him again getting, he thought he was getting released, even though he was at TH Marine, and I should look into this and that. And we kind of said our goodbyes. There was no picture taking, there was no nothing. If there was anything, I might have had my phone out, and while he's talking to me, I was looking down at my phone thinking, how do I get out of this conversation? I don't want to have a relationship with him. I never have. The one time, the first time we saw it, all he did was dog Dave Mercer about how the the Mercer the Mercer issue with uh, the Mercer and Duncan podcast, how it, the, the falling apart came. And I took Dave's side. I took, excuse me, I took Luke's side on it. Luke said he got grabbed and he was harassed and he was bullied and all sorts of stuff. Now, I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe it anymore. Just because of the character that is Luke Duncan. He's a narcissist. He made the video about James. Again, I apologize. I don't have it right off the top of my head because I'm thinking about what the next thing I'm going to say. The video about James about him. And because I didn't know the name of his show. He sent me, he blasted my phone. Now, I didn't have his phone number. If we were so close and that we knew each other, why don't I have his phone number? I don't have it. I didn't have his phone number. He had mine. So while there's always two sides of every story, there's one side that's drastically lopsided, and that's Luke's. Because he is a narcissist, and his ego has taken over. He believes that that James Watson thing and me forgetting his name should be about him. Because who in their right mind would not remember his, his show name? Who? Who amongst us? Think about that. 
How narcissistic is it that you have you think because someone second guesses, like I've done two or three times in this video, and I'm not going to edit anything out of this video, two or three seconds of this, that I went back and didn't know the name of your show, that you can do that. And you can say, make sure you walk away from me if you see me. That's called a bully. And and honestly, Luke, I'm not I'm not going to walk away from you. Just like this video. I'm not... I'm up front. This is, this is my side and a lot more honesty and a lot more truth. And you said in the thing, oh, I only watched 50 seconds. Bullshit. Bullshit. You're a liar. You're a narcissist, you're ego, and now I'm going to call you pathological liar. You knew this. Do you know why this is here? Because it says my son's name on it. And to think that you think that that's how, that, that I did a show because of you. Let's be honest. Let's keep it real. I did Fishing Florida Radio before you were even a professional. Before you were a professional. And we broadcast that live on Facebook and YouTube before you even started a YouTube channel. That's a fact. So before you go spouting off about how I have cloned you, Maybe you cloned me, son. Maybe you cloned me. Maybe you heard something about what I do or what we did and the success that we had. And the reason why we stopped was because of COVID. And I've been asked at least 100 times to come back. It's easy to do a YouTube channel and to blast people and to be an ass. But when you got to have sponsors to, do, to pay for time or to syndicate your show in the the biggest one in the country at the time. You come find me. When you've got those results and that you don't live on your success from being negative against Major League Fishing, you come find me. Because let's be honest. Let's keep it real. You and I have the same, almost the same exact statistics for views. That's true. Month to month. In the last six months, I've beat you five out of six. You should look it up, man. It's the truth. And I know the truth hurts. That's the problem. People get on here and they, they spout off their opinions, but and people fire back because they're unhappy or they don't like the opinions. And I have no problem ex saying, if you don't like my opinion, that's perfectly fine. I'm not, I have no problem with it. But don't call me a joke and a phony and to stay away and try to bully me. I'm not afraid of you at all. This is me and you talking. I don't care if anyone looks at it. To remotely think that your five second clip is why people watch that video is narcissistic because it takes time to get into that. I didn't use you in the clip in the beginning. I didn't use you in my thumbnail. I didn't use you in your ta the tags or anything. To think that you think that I needed you to get a view. You want to know what got me the view? Major League Fishing banning or suspending James. But you needed it to be about you. So good. Good job, son. Good job. I hope you have a great night sleeping on that. Because that is absolute narcissistic beauty. <laughs> you have done it again. I apologize at one point in time because I said you were narcissistic. And I said you were narcissistic because some from, someone from MPFL mentioned that and put it in my head. That's the, the God's honest truth. Someone that you work with. There's no lie there. Hand to God. But then I said, you want to know what? It makes no sense. And this is really how the whole thing started. This whole beef between uh, Luke and I. Is that he, I said it's narcissistic to put to say that people are looking for the name of that song, but every time you play the song, that you say, I wrote it and I sang it. If people hear that, why are they commenting who sang that song? If they heard the song and you say, that's me singing it and wrote it, why are people commenting on that? There was no one commenting. That's the other truth. And I called him narcissistic about it. And he got mad that someone called him out. He is narcissistic. He's proven it now. He's proven it then. Because nobody searched for those things. Nobody did. 
At that point in time, that was when ma the Major League Fishing thing had started. I went through dozens of your videos. Didn't find one comment saying people commented, who is this? Who sings this great song? Because nobody did. It was just your ego and your narcissistic tendencies that you needed to do it. You needed, to, you needed to tell people, look how great I am and how great I sing and how amazing this song is. But you want to know what all these people are asking for? It. Bullshit. Hear the, hear the ding over there? It's bullshit. And this has gone on long enough. I don't want anything to do with Luke Duncan. I wish he'd keep his, my name off of his podcast. I think it's disgusting. I think it's disturbing. And... I think maybe he looks up to me. I think there's something to be said. Maybe he maybe he wants to be me. I don't know. It's possible. Anything's possible. So, Luke, good luck. As I always say, good luck to everybody. But, dude, stay in your lane, man. If you see me, I cast, you don't have to worry about me saying hello. I'm not going to say hello, but I'm sure not going to avoid you. I can tell you that. And I'm gonna to try to I'm gonna to try to cover an NPFL event. And honestly, I hope the people, I hope the owners of the new owners of NPFL watch this and see your true colors. I really do. Because you're not good for a lot of things. And I respect your opinion and what you do and how you do it, but the way you come across isn't good. I actually feel bad for you, man. I'm sorry. So, there it is. Luke, you have my response.